friend and colleague of Miss Price, well, sat with her to talk, not about operas and concerts, but about background and family. What truly makes her Leontine Price. Terrific. I want to ask you with a little bit of a prelude to it. Yes. Last December, uh, my wife and I were in Washington, and we found ourselves at, a, at the occasion of the Kennedy Center Honors. Yes. And we were at the dinner, and she was sitting next to Brigadier General George Price. Oh. <laughs> and I suddenly realized that Brigadier General Price was your brother. It occurred to me that here is an extraordinary brother and sister combination. And here are the two of you on the top pinnacle of your individual choices. Now, there has to be a fantastic story to that. You must have had some very special parents. You must have had all kinds of the things that I believe are still vibrant in America. Energy, talent, which comes from the Lord, but talent and energy and drive and intelligence. And I wonder if you would like to comment on that a little bit, because it's really an extraordinary story. I'm very proud to, to say that the, the answer to, to all those questions are, in a substance, uh, two names. Um, Catherine Baker Price and James Anthony Price, our very extraordinary parents. I think that sometimes when I see my brother, when we're together, there are certain areas of, of my father that are so totally fantastic in him as, as in my, my mother seems to be uh, for him. Um, apropos to egos, I, I adore my brother. He is very elegant, beautiful, definitely the brains in the family. Um, it's more often our pop possible. I try to keep him under wraps because he'll totally <laughs> block me out. He's really extraordinary gentleman. Uh, I guess we, in a sense, um, inherited uh, all of the things that I think are still um, um, very, very essential to doing anything um, well, even now. Um, which I tell the young youngsters uh, who ask me this question, and that is, uh, burning the midnight oil, the desire to be the best you possibly can be, to work very hard at it, to be inspired uh, by, your, by your own uh, belief in yourself, to an extraordinary family ambiance of love and discipline, which is a wonderful combination. Absolutely. Um, the religious background. Um, actually, the difficulties, I think, uh, for us both, as we say often, began later. Uh, but not early in Mississippi. It's an extraordinary thing. That's a strange thing to say. Yes, very, it is. very incongruous. But I mean that. Um, I think that there, there are times now that both of us believe that our, our roots and our childhood were so wonderful and so untampered with for a development of, of youngsters. Uh, it was also a community effort. It's that wonderful kind of, uh, some people would call it provincial. Um, there are times now, maybe I would prefer uh, refer to it as that, but basically, they're healthy. Um, I remember one teachers uh, who, who cooperate with your parents to see that you are, you know, doing the best that you possibly can be. I guess, in a sense, you'd call us maybe overachievers, but why not? If, oh. you, if you overachieve, you're bound to maybe succeed in something, you know. And I am extremely proud of him. I mean, uh, speaking of heroes, he is my number one hero. Um, uh, I can understand besides that. Besides my father, <laughs> absolutely. No, I can understand that. Uh, I... And um, uh, it's, it's two egos that, that don't need to be collected and, and often, you know. I mean, I actually... Um, and definitely my brother's sister. It's not the other way around when we are together. As a matter of fact, he did make that rather clear. <laughs> yes, he does. It doesn't take long. He doesn't he's be shy about it. There's no, not no at all. problem about that. No. But your father and mother, um, in terms of their their lives in in, in Mississippi, um, both of them obviously must have been people of determination of, of unusual interest of love of family I think well. it's the loving parents and their inspiration and what they and what they uh, give to you uh, along with their their the ambiance of the community as well but I would singularly give credit to my very beloved wonderful mother and father is your father the one that was involved in the in church work? well they were both mm -hmm. very great contributors to their mm -hmm. community my mother's 
a whole kitchen was like the lighthouse. Um, she was a beaconing light. I don't know to this date how she did everything that she did in a given day. Um, I go to Europe and to parts east and west all over the world and I meet someone that my mother delivered as the most successful Jones County midwife. Um, uh, uh, also, I think she overdid naming uh, too many people. Lynn Team, but then maybe she was a little weary at the time. <laughs> Uh, my father was not a very educated man in the, in, the, in the technical sense of the word. My mother actually graduated from a college very close to my heart, to which, and on, on, on whose campus I, I uh, have to build a library, which fortunately is named for, for me, oh, uh, because it was my mother's alma mater. It's Rust College in Holly Springs, Mississippi, one of the first educational institutions for freshly freed slaves. And she was a student there. My father, I think, probably finished the sixth or seventh grade, but he was so extraordinary. He could take, he was sort of the, the, the local electrician and carpenter. He could build anything and he could repair anything. He could take any electrical item apart and, and put it together again. Extraordinary brain. It was, if he had not been, I'm sure, so poor and the things had not been so difficult in his childhood, he probably would have been, you know, a very, would have been able to, to, to uh, accelerate on that skill. But he was certainly very useful to the community in many ways. They were, and my mother, of course, was a bulwark of strength in the church, and um, everyone told her their problems. It was, our house was like a, a, a maybe it's why I sort of, sort of uh, uh, scream for my privacy now, because our house was like open sesame to everyone in the community. It's extraordinary. But I have noticed over the years that you do like your privacy, and now I think I'm beginning to understand the real motivation for it. Because Excuse if your house was, was an open sesame... It really was, it. for the entire community. All problems were solved by my mother or my father, or collectively or singularly, it was extraordinary. Um, I would say that that's, that's only a part of it. After being involved and seeing that there might be some direction, for me to take with a serious musical career, particularly one as, as, as extraordinarily grandiose as opera, which I really never would have believed would have happened to me in, in, in Mississippi, I promise you. There are days even now I'm not quite so sure how it happened. But um, I, I, I can only do one thing well at a time, and I, I know myself very well. And when it is time to work, I'm an all work or all play girl. So if it's time to work, I literally, I wouldn't say isolate, I am so bent, and I don't sound, want to sound like some kind of a musical Joan of Arc, but why not? It, if it produces results, it's my way, it's my own pace and my own way of doing the very best consistent performances that I can. And that is absolutely to do nothing else. I don't like the idea of at 8 o'clock or a matinee or any time the curtain goes up that I have contributed anything that does not make me give the most, most, the nearest to the best performance that I can give. I have this terrible thing about, you know, doing, because I like to do my best, and why not? And if that's the method that it takes, fine. But then once I am on vacation, I certainly won't accept one single date or do anything, except have a lot of time, go to the theater, see friends, sit in a draft, an air conditioning, <laughs> you know, the whole thing. And, the, and that's, uh, that's, uh, that's really the main reason for it. It cuts down on canceling, which managers like a lot. It cuts down on not being sort of uh, prepared, which conductors um, like a lot. So um, it, it's, it's good for your image, in my, in my uh, uh, opinion, to just um, take, take your own pace for doing what you... I just simply cannot socialize an awful lot and sing well because I, 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 I have a certain... which my beloved um, teacher Florence Page Kimball left me with, and these roots are still, speaking of roots, uh, take, take me. She said, you know, you just uh, arrested... arrested body is arrested voice. A healthy body is a, is a healthy voice. You discipline your life so that when you're working, you're working. And yes. that is a responsibility, and that's a responsibility you keep and you care about. It's the reward for any element or instant of hard work that you've put in. And it makes you feel terrific. I mean, why would you not want to feel... I like to feel terrific as much as possible. First, to see a delirious joy performing. 
is something that will always get you out. Now that means that's involved with uh, the fact that you really, uh, as the kids say in the vernacular, dig your own talent, dig your own voice. Uh, therefore, if you if you're in love with it and you you know you're sort of crazy about uh, the way it, it feels to you, you can deliver it with a great deal of happiness. You know, and so all of the things involved in not you know it's not a job in other words i'm trying to say it's a it's a pleasure and then you get down buckle down to the technical things that it takes to deliver that instrument to the best of your ability and beyond if possible and get all the fine points started it's a it's a very it's sort of a it sounds like a distinct regime but but it it, it requires that it's like a thoroughbred uh, race horse you know you don't find them just wandering around in any stables or or you they have a, a certain kind of brushing down that makes them um, makes them what they exactly. are exactly and uh, quality quality is really better than quantity I do believe at least I think so personally um, I would like to I'd like to to try to be magnanimous when I start that too and as long as the light is on you and you are really warmed very much still by it and thank goodness in my case just a little just uh, to now a, a bit more. Still fine. fine, thank you. Uh, but it, it's wonderful to be able to say that even while I'm still active. You see, because a, a very sad also thing is it, a thing also is to be a built up performer who is trying to produce another young artist into into you, which is a colossal bore for them, and a sad thing for you. Um, to collect enough of the success so that you will be able to pass on not part of you, but to really. I find that the thing that probably will be very wonderful about this for me is having a non-compromising attitude about my career in this particular way. Uh, I have no children. I borrow mine from my brother, you know, borrow his from my brother. But technically, I believe that at this stage coming another dimension, because I feel I'm on the brink of another dimension in my life, and it's very important to know that you're having those vibrations because you can prepare for it rather than have, have it meet you head on. And I, I think that I'll probably will be the, a mother, a sister, and all the things that, uh, that Miss Kimball was for me. That's the kind of teacher I'd like to be. You have come to be, um, uh, apart from your artistry, a tremendous symbol of what can be done with talent and drive, with, uh, with joy. Um, a very distinguished and very uh, important uh, person in your own right and a symbol for your race. Um, I have a feeling that what you have accomplished uh, just by being you has been a tremendous example to lots of people. And I wonder if you have any feelings about that in terms of the next generation coming up. I cannot express the pride that I have experienced in the progress that has been made uh, just in my field alone, in the time that I started. This year's a 30-year, 30 30-season 30 career, but an active one that, that has seen um, um, this most grandiose medium of opera extend itself, which actually makes me thrill beyond belief. There are other extensions I'd like to, to have happen. I'd like to see more, more black heroes in, in various parts. That, that could be due to many, many uh, Turks But the door is there. I'm happy that I had any minuscule part of it because I always very much um, liked flexing my muscles being a pioneer. That really is it was a, it was great inspiration for me, was a great inspiration for me. Uh, in the apropos to the word symbol, I do know that I I feel this warmth and support of my people that they are able to participate in an appreciation uh, to come to to enjoy cultural events. Now that is a statement in itself, but to have them be able because progress has been, has been made in our country and in this ambiance to come first, to be able to come first, and secondly, to appreciate what is offered. I, I mean, it just keeps me <coughs> young <laughs> and keeps me happy as a lark. I'm a, and to see really the young ones, you know, really, it's, 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 it, it's very, um, it's very um, ego building and also very inspiring, very inspiring, very inspiring indeed.